I was working my buns off, but they weren't. I do a lot of band work as well. And so every time I say the rhythm is bum bum, bum bum, echo it. And then they pick up their horns to play it, but I never explain how it got there. That never went to the other direction to see if they could tell me what that rhythm was. I never checked. I was enabling them, I was not empowering them. So I changed my view after my first five years of teaching. When I realized my kids could take theory tests like crazy, do the circle of fifths on fat cats go down and eat bagel, man, they had that stuff down. But they couldn't sing Come to Jesus in whole notes. And if I asked the band to sing things back to me off the page, it didn't happen. I talked to them about starting subjectation. It blew their minds because they had only been ever taught one way. They were paper trained just like me. Here's the music, we put it up on the piano. There it says A, press A, guess what you're gonna get? A, didn't mean they understood it, didn't mean they could go from any direction. So I changed my philosophy and I went, I wanna empower my kids to be able to do all of this without me. I want them to be literate in music when they finish with me at the end of 12th grade. I do not want them to be like me when I went off to be a music major. I could only go in one direction. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I suspect that a lot of you have come here and you have either been the victim of being enabled, have been someone who was taught only one direction. And that is probably because your teacher is just like me. They were only taught how to teach in one direction. They weren't taught how to teach in both and all four ways. It's taken me a while to do that. Everything you're gonna to see today, I learned on my own. I didn't get in, not, not even one of my degrees. Sad, but true. Okay, so when you're a baby and you're born, out of the womb you come. It isn't long you start to imitate. Pretty soon we're saying, where's your nose? Find your ears, find your toes. Then we're starting with them with things like, the kitty says, meow, meow. The dog says, woof, woof. We even had one of those big yellow things that was a C and say, and you pull that string and it goes around, it goes, the duck says, quack, quack. Pretty soon we're imitating. Then we're putting words together and we find out, you understand, go get your shoes. I'll bring them, that out they come with their little shoes. Oh, we know they understand what shoes is. And we'll say to little kids, use your words when they're trying to do things. I mean, we're doing everything in our power to give them vocabulary, first with their ears. They're not reading, they're not writing. Pretty soon you're having conversations with your two-year-old. Sometimes you can't believe what they tell you because they have such a vivid imagination. And you never know what they're gonna say at any given time of the day. So you have to watch your words at home. Because if you don't, they will be in the most inconvenient place, stand up and say some really bad words. <laughs> we also learn your little code words for bathroom, for number two, number one, poo poo, who knows what it is, but there you are, and your little kid tells you in the middle of Walmart. And now the whole world knows what your family secret code word are for some things. So we teach our kids completely orally first in all languages. But in music, unfortunately, we've somewhat gone to doing the page before the sound and yet learn oral art. So we did not teach our kids to read and write. We did not teach them noun and verb before they could have conversation, which is really improvisation. So in learning music, they gotta go through the battle stage. Some of the college kids I get are still in the battle stage. They really don't know what those sounds are. For many of them, they're learning to make sounds vocally for the first time in a long time. Then we ask them to start to audiate and think in it. We find out how ingrained is it in the sound. We ask them to improvise in it just like we did with the languages. And then we learn to read and write. For me, I only learned it from one direction, unfortunately. So why are we compared so much to linguistics? Because we share so much. We are hardly any math at all. Other than beyond fractions, there's no math. We are language arts. There are whole books now written. Um, in fact, one of them is with a lady out of Wichita. It's an excellent, excellent book if you want to see more of how we're related to it. I'm sure you've all heard music as a language. Well, we are. And we learn it the same way in very much the same parts of the brain. 
Look at everything that we have in common. Rhythm, structure, fluency, pitch, pattern, thrills of composition, sound before symbol. We learn to speak in the language before we ever learn to read in the language, write in the language. We were improvising in the language long before we ever learned to read the language. Then, this is so cool. There's so much research out there that shows the connection between language and music. This is from neuroscience, the importance of keeping a beat. Researchers link ability to keep a beat to reading language skills. They find that those kids who read really well and fluently have an internal sense of beat. The kids who have problems with reading have a problem with keeping beat. It's not part of who they are. And keep in mind, beat doesn't just happen because you get to a certain age. It happens because of the experiences that you have and the movement that you have with your body. Rhythm is an integral part of both music and language. The rhythm of spoken language is a crucial key to understanding. We need elementary music five days a week. Five days a week. I know I'm preaching to the choir right now, mm -hmm. but I gotta tell you, we've got to do stuff to change this. We shouldn't be the babysitter. We are an integral part of that child's life. They need to be singing, moving, everything, five days a week. I can't say it enough. If they had it five days a week, when they came to middle school, we wouldn't have to go back and start at the bottom. In most cases, we do. Why? Because once a week isn't going to be enough. Imagine if you only had math once a week. It's not fair. How many of us even remember the sermon last Sunday? <laughs> We need repetition. We need to do it over and over again. Our babies need music five days a week. I've been lucky enough to get it increased in a lot of the districts I've been in because I tell this to the parents at my concerts. I'm enlightening them. And then I'm talking to them about the child's musical aptitude is highest at birth. If they're in a rich musical environment, they maintain more of that musical aptitude. If they're not, the aptitude goes down until around age 10, 11, 12, it levels off and that's all they have the rest of their life for their aptitude. You can take that test at age 12, take it again at 25, take it again at 85, and the score will be the same. Then, the only thing I can do as an upper level teacher, blow the dust off, see what we have, and work on achievement with what they do have. And achievement is different. One is the hunger, and the other one is the achievement of using those skills. And um, it's not talent-based. It's taking that talent and now showing I can add and do all these things with it, and I have a level of proficiency. Wow, I wish we could do it the other way. Let, let's take one step back real quick. How many of you in here are bilingual? Oh, man, you are so lucky. So lucky. When did you learn your other language? Well, I don't know if you can say English or Spanish, but mostly I really learned when I moved here. Oh, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Oh, from Brazil. So Portuguese? Yep. Ah, yes. Um, my Portuguese is very limited. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in most cases, and so it was harder for her. When did you lose your learn yours? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Much harder to learn it as an adult. Who was the other one? Yes. So what's your uh, two languages? Oh, and French. So where did you grow up? Oh, so you took French just to learn the language. Most people who are bilingual learned it when they were little. And I hope that she will teach her kids both languages from birth on because it's a natural part of the process. So my dad spoke German till age seven. My mom was the only one in her country in um, her family who wasn't born in Norway. So my aunts and uncles, my mother spoke Norwegian. I don't speak a word. I can't even swear in Norwegian. It's really bad. Um, and that is because they talked amongst themselves about us. How I wish my parents, I could be fluent in German, 
and Norwegian and English. Because when do we learn languages the easiest? Birth to around age 12 or so. Much harder when you are older, by far. Wow. So, I wish we were like here, where almost everybody who's there knows more than one language. So what is music literacy? I've, I've used some words already. Well, it says that I have the ability to translate <coughs> notation into vocal sound, which is reading. Notice it doesn't say sight reading. It says what? Reading. You either read or you don't read. Then it says sound into notation. That's notating or dictating. That means I should hear a piece on the radio and be able to write it down. Difficult, not an easy task. And then it says I should be able to express spontaneous musical ideas, which is improvisation. Like for a moment, she and I had a little bit of improv going here as we were chatting. And then same thing there. We were spontaneously understanding each other, communicating ideas not just what came out of her mouth. So it is a beep ba to do wah Yeah, that's scat singing, but you have to be able to tell me exactly what you did for improvisation to be real. If you can't tell me what you did, then it was by chance. And finally, I should be able to pick up that piece of music and hear it internally, completely with my ears. I should be able to walk onto my band podium, put out a new piece, and say, okay, everybody's hands are up, instruments are down. I want you to patch through this piece, and I want you to silently think this and sing this piece inside your head from beginning to end. We get to the end, hopefully we're all there together, pick up your horns, here we go. And there should be hardly any mistakes in it whatsoever. If they're truly audiating, and they really know all the patterns in that piece of music how exciting it would be to be a conductor when that happens. That's not what happens in most cases. We often pick music too hard for them, and they don't have the patterns. They don't hear the patterns. They don't necessarily even read the patterns correctly. We're asking them to do things that is out of their realm. So I'm gonna pick on my friend Jason, drove over from Kansas City today. So, Jason, have you, um, have you had a variety of choirs in your life? Indeed. So did some of them have great reading and oral skills? Over time, yes. Yes. Yeah. They didn't start that way. No. How, <laughs> so what did you, how did you get them there? Uh, I did a lot of what you already see today with patterns, both tonal and rhythmic, mm -hmm. um, and also required them to show me that they could do that independently. Yes. To demonstrate. Yes, that. because otherwise you wouldn't know. Yeah. Yep. And so, have you gotten kids into your program in a variety of levels of where they are? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's huge. So, I might have a freshman who maybe they took some voice lessons and piano lessons. Although just because they took piano and voice still doesn't necessarily. No, make that's them right. Better. Yeah. But they seem to pick up things faster. And then I have students who did not sing whatsoever in middle school. And so they are ninth grade, but they're really at a second grade musical level yeah. in terms of their literacy. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. And you yeah. can't blame teachers. I, I hope you all understand that. When you see them once a week, there's only so much you can do. That's it, period. And we need the consistency, we need the repetition, it's got to be there. But then also, when we get them in middle school, often that everything's by rote, they weren't taught any elements of it. And probably they weren't taught a lot of those elements because the teacher themselves were never taught how to teach it. Or they didn't realize, it doesn't matter if you're teaching elementary, middle or high, if they don't have the foundation, you have to go back and put the foundation there. So I joke, I have taught elementary music at the elementary, the middle school, the high school, and then I got my doctorate for the privilege of teaching elementary music to college, undergrads, and graduate students. Because most of my grad students are not fluent in dictation. Most of my grad students don't know how to begin to do improv. Most of my grad students, if I asked them to audiate that, they couldn't. Most of them can't find patterns because that wasn't part of their teaching. 
Instead it was, oh yeah, we learned this great big piece, but I learned it really, how? By rote. Rote is fine, but you gotta move from rote to something else. And you might have heard him say, they come in in various degrees. Doesn't matter how they come in, our job is to take them wherever they are and give them the foundation and move them forward. So don't say, well, I'm gonna be a conductor. Well, good luck, I wonder who you're gonna be conducting because they probably don't have the skills for it to take place where you step on and it's instant music. That means you have to be the teacher. I prepared some choirs for Michael Tilson Thomas who was with San Francisco uh, Symphony and he also did the New World Symphony in Miami. And when he worked with my college choir, first thing he did when he stepped on the podium, he said, nobody should be on the podium unless they're a teacher first. I wanted to hug him, cheer him, and then he proceeded to have my kids get up and start to move, and they all kept turning and looking back at me, because ah, they didn't like me, because I had them what? Moving, I had them being responsible, and suddenly when I went back to class on Monday, I had a new group of kids who were suddenly willing to do things, but it was so out of the norm from what they did before. So I guess this is leading up to this. If you've had any of this, go back and thank your teacher. Go back and thank them. If you haven't, get about the task real quickly of learning something new. It's real important that we continue to be a lifelong learner, including me. Okay, so could I said, teaching an instrument to a kid without first giving a preparatory training and without developing singing, reading, and dictating that band, that orchestra, we should be singing like crazy in there. Now pick up your instrument and play it. If they sing it in tune, it's probably gonna be played in tune. Notice he also said the word dictating. Could I, and he's considered an elementary specialist that's starting the bottom level. So what too many of us have been taught is decoding. So you see that note, press these keys. That's decoding. Doesn't mean you understand it, doesn't mean you can take dictation, etc. in it. I'm a decoder. I am a paper trained girl. Put the music up on that piano and I will more than likely play it correctly for you. But if you said to me, Carol, can you uh, improvise and do some stuff on America the Beautiful? No, because I'm a decoder. Am I getting a little better at doing my improv and being all over the keyboard? Yeah, but I'm not a Brandon. I'm not a Dr. Boyd. I wish I had both. I wish I could improvise on anything and know what it was that I didn't go in with a plan, just like Mozart and Beethoven and everybody did, and Bach. Oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. No, I'm the person who does the recipe. See the recipe on that page? And then we as conductors spend 97% of our time telling our kids what's already on the page. When in reality, they should see it on the page and off we should go. All right, man, could I knew a lot. He wrote a lot of these things back in 1929. So I've been talking about improv. Well, it's really spontaneous musical ideas is what it is. And that from one person we add on to the next one. So we're going to take a little bit deeper look in this today. But improvisation is the readiness for learning to read. It doesn't come after you read, it comes before you read. Just like having the conversation with your three-year-old comes before you read and write. And so we then work on our improvisation with our kids. So let's see, I'm going to pick on Dr. Boyd for just a minute. So let's say I'm working with my cherubs and we only know do, re, mi. So I would have done the patterns. So let's together think about what these patterns could be, echo after mom, okay? Normally I would do neutral to neutral, but time is of the essence. So we're just gonna go right to syllables. Here we go, sitting tall. Use your hand sign, imitate mom. Here I go. Do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. Mi, re, do. Mi, re, do. So there's lots of patterns that I 
can do with just three notes. Then I would come back and sing it on a neutral and see how many could give it back to me. So here I go. Bum, 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 so pleasure. Do, re, mi. Bum, bum, bum. Mi, do, re. Bum, bum, bum. Re, mi, do. Good. That tells me that they can label sounds that they're hearing. Then we're ready to go to do some improv. So, um, Dr. Boyd and I are gonna improv for a minute. We, I'm gonna do a pattern. And he's gonna start his pattern on whatever note I end on. <coughs> so he can't be thinking ahead about, oh, I'm gonna do this pattern. No, he isn't gonna be able to know what his pattern is until he hears me. And it's spontaneous, just like if I asked you a question. He would have to immediately in his brain, synapse is going to answer the question. So he has to wait for that last pitch to figure out where he's gonna start. So, and I will label it with solfege, okay? Here I go. Do, mi, re. Re, re, mi, re. Re, do, mi. Mi, do, mi. Mi, re, do. Do, mi, do. Do you see what we're doing? Now I'm gonna find out if he can sing any of those intervals. <coughs> I'm gonna find out if he's correct on them. Um, if he's accurate, and if he's not, is he ready to go to reading? No, it would be like him not knowing the difference between red and blue and the colors. Now I'm finding out what they know. If I'm an instrumentalist, I would also, in that process with you here, I would have also had you pick up your instrument after we've done so, play it back to me. Especially in brass. If you're in brass, oh my God, if you don't know where that, time, that center is and you can't find it, man, life is gonna be tough for you because you have to hear those partials. Then we would move forwards. We'd add me on so, we'd add other things into it. And pretty soon, he's gonna be able to do, he, he might even be walking around campus singing patterns. <laughs> no, to get better at it. Because I did, I wasn't taught this way. I was paper trained. I was scared to death of having to sing things. And my voice didn't always listen to my head because I was afraid. I had to get over that, drive in the car. I'm practicing the one chord to the five mm -hmm. chord. Do me so far, re so ti do. Damn girl, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I couldn't have done that. Play it for you on my horn, play it on the piano. Yes, sing it. Oh, hell no. I'm sorry, we're in church. <laughs> but, Lord knows what it was like. It was hell for me. It truly was. So do you see where we're going with this? And you have to say, let me take a good look at me. Where are my gaps? Can I do all of this? Am I proficient at it? Am I at a level I should be at for my education? And if I'm not, what am I gonna do about the responsibility? Don't point the finger back at the teacher. Point the finger right at you and say, get thee to a practice room and start to figure it out. Let me get to a level. That's what I had to do. I had nobody kicking me in the butt, but I knew. And I didn't want to hide the rest of my life. I suspect some of you might be here with me. Remember, it becomes the readiness to read notation. Audiation means that I can hear it all in my head. Godai said we should read music the same way we read a book, in silence. Wouldn't that be awesome? First five minutes of the choral rehearsal, we silently read that piece. Now we sing. So this is a guy out of Indiana, um, Don Esther. He's written some really good papers and things. He says, we hear a sound, we give it a verbal association, be it Takadini, be it the um, solfege, with a syllable, some kind of a syllable. Then we do a visual transformation and show them what it looks like in the symbol, and we read. But it also happens this way. I hear the sound, and into my head comes the do, re, mi. Instantly I knew what that was. It's like I was possessed by soulfish. <laughs> and out of my mouth comes the right soulfish. And then I can write it down in symbols. But it also happens like this. I hear the sound, I can instantly read it down and uh, write it down in a symbol. Out of my mouth comes the right syllable and off I'm going. I can do it in all those directions. 
and in the middle, I can audiate and hear those sounds, and I can improvise with every one of those sounds from any direction at all. Now I'm literate. I'm still working on some of these areas. So, who's, where does this come from? These four handsome dudes up here. But it really starts with sound before sight before theory. You start with sound before you ever show them what it looks like in sight, before you ever give them theory. I did it completely backwards. I went right to the theory because I came out of college, bam, theory, theory. But theory is the only way of getting a, um, talking about music. It doesn't <clears throat> make you a better musician. So that's where it came from Pestalozzi. Then we had Bruner who said, we also need to show this in, in iconic ways before we ever show it to them in symbols. We do that all the time in language arts. We have a picture of a cat, and then we draw the arrow to the C-A-T. How many remember ever doing any of those kinds of pages? Well, you have a lot of iconic teaching. Then we have good eyes, so we gotta prepare, present, practice, and prove the ears. Then we gotta do it with the eyes. By the way, Kodai's mother was a trained Pestalozzian teacher. And by the way, good parts of our education are completely based on that sound before sight before theory. And then we have Gordon come along who said, I have a theory that if we do all these things and we do it in this process, our kids will be far more literate. You're gonna get a lot of all four of these dudes today. Really quick. So we're in oral art. We gotta sing it, hear it, chant it before we ever do it with an instrument. We must do it in our bodies and own it. Then we label the sound with some kind of a verbal association. We call that the sign. It becomes one. Finally, we show them what it looks like in symbol and somewhere down the road, you can teach them the theory. They don't need to know the theory to be really good at it. Now, for you budding teachers, you got to be committed to this. You got to be committed to improving your literacy level and your students, or it won't happen just because you want it to. It's not the way the world works. You got to get excited about it. Notice that at nowhere up there have you been seeing the word sight reading. When I get kids at the college level, I never use that word because if I did, they'd all be going Ugh, because they have a predetermined notion of what it is, which is only one direction. No, we're learning to be literate in music. We're gonna go all the directions with it. Finally, you gotta believe they can do it because they can. In fact, it blows your mind when you see what some of them can do. I've seen sixth graders do the whole tone scale in four part canon, can do it from any direction because their ears are so incredible. And then I'm, I'm envious actually, because my ears are old. And I wish I had the chance to go back and rebuild more of it. And then you got to find the sequence. A lot of what you're going to get is diatonically based, since we're a diatonic society here in the United States. And I want that to be usable from K through collegiate. And I want that they see it in elementary, general, instrumental, orchestral, choral. I want that they can see it and all the methods courses at the college. I want them to see it in action in all the rehearsals for the ensembles. No, the piano's not gonna play it for you. No, I'm not gonna sing you that rhythm. Sorry, brass section. Let's take it apart and do it with our ears and layer it up. And now let me do some rhythms and see if you can give it back to me on, um, by translating. If I'm on a neutral, you give it back to me on the labels. Then I know that you can hear a sound and label it. So how did you learn a lot of your sounds? I'll bet you guys know the difference between a train horn, a car horn, and a 18-wheeler horn. How did you learn that? Because somebody labeled it for you. I know guys who can hear a car drive by and tell me it's a 57 Chevy. And I'm just amazed. But because they were taught and labeled. So we need to take and make up our deficits but make sure our kids can get it. And of course, I want it in every methods course. I want the process to be taught because if I didn't grow up doing it, how will I know that process unless somebody helps me with it? 
And that's why so many people come to my workshops because they realize their kids are missing it. They, once they learn to, do, to teach this way, teaching becomes much more fun. Oh my gosh, because it's not you alone, it's you with the whole group. So Jason's had a bunch of my student teachers. He had my first ones that I had for a semester, <laughs> but he's seen the growth with them over time too. But more importantly, I've seen Jason's growth. From when he's starting them at the bottom in the first year, everybody's at the same level. And then after he's there three years, he's got three distinct levels going on in the room. The fourth year, it's like, oh, my seniors, I cannot believe what they're doing. Oh, my God. Then he goes, now I just got to get my middle school people to start to teach this way. So they're handing me ninth graders who are at a much higher level. Then he goes skipping to work because it's a whole different atmosphere in the world because he's not trying to push the train up the hill by himself. They're all like the ducks on the water. They're all just paddling underneath, moving and going, because they, they're finding it exciting too, because they're doing it. You want to just take a minute and talk about any of the kids you've had that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I, I have a young man who is a junior who um, had some severe emotional issues when he was in middle school. And, um, so he's been with me for three years when he first came because he missed out on some important skill sets. It was, it was a lot of just go, right? And he also has a speech impediment too. So it's like, go, me. And so we, we only focused on that. And so we were, I was incorporating methods to help him with pitch matching and those. And so it's like, um, I just, I met him where he was. I said, would, Jackson, would you sing any note you want? And he would go, oh, I was like, great. Do, sing that back to me, do. And so we just worked on one note, and then maybe it was do, re, do, and he'd be like, do, re, do, and, and it yes. was just a back and forth. That's and a really good imitation too. It, <laughs> it, it's, it's what I, it was true reality, true reality. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say, Carol, is one thing that's really helped me too, in the back of my choir, I finally got smart this year, and you all saw that sound before sight, before theory, which 99% of the world seems to do it backwards yes. because everybody's like, oh, you have to know your theory. No, you really don't. That's, that's, that's the icing on the cake, right? Yep. So I put a poster in the back of my room, I'm not <laughs> kidding you, right by the clock that says sound before sight, before, th before theory, and then the other one is experience and label. Is yes, the yes, experience and label. So those two things remind me every day of my teaching. I'm not going to go into a theoretical diatribe because that's me. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. <laughs> In fact, think about math. Uh, pi r squared, 3.14, right? Do you know how you got that? No. Do you care? No, <laughs> because it's a theory. Instead, if you know how to put it together, you can do all kinds of things with the with the circle because you know the formula. Pythagorean theorem, do I know how they got it? No. Do I care? No. And guess what? Most of your math teachers can't tell you either. It's how to use it. Music is doing. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, this is most choirs for me. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go really quickly into some movement and fun stuff. So what do I do with my crazy characters? I teach them a ton of road songs, all on a neutral syllable, no text. Because if I use text, they're thinking about the words, not listening to what's happening with the rhythm or the tonal part of it. I'm gonna do a ton of movement with them, all kinds, for meter, for longs and shorts of rhythms, uh, for uh, all the beat functions, uh, beat, divided beat, subdivided beat, everything. I'm gonna label it, label it, label it, label it. Experience it, label it, experience it, label it. So we're about to experience it. Then, when they own that, I start doing the vocabulary like you saw me do with the Joe Ray Me. And finally, we move to showing up what it looks like in symbols. And frankly, if I only get through that first part in the first semester with my choir, I'm okay. Because <laughs> they're gonna learn songs by rote so much quicker because their ears are working. They're gonna do things so fast. And then when I do go to the reading of it after a while, uh, it's like, oh, this is so easy. Yeah, because you actually know what the words are. You actually understand those sounds. It's such a simple process, but it's hard to do when you haven't been trained in it. 
So think of it this way, in the ears, out the mouth, in the ears, out the mouth. If I'm an instrumentalist, after we've done that, pick up your horn and play it to me. Now, do some more, in the ears, out the mouth. I will do a lot of whole songs, parts of songs. And when I'm teaching a rote song, I don't say, listen to my rote song. No, because they're not listening to you. Instead, I'll say, I want you to listen to this song, practice and feel the division of the beat. And when you hear a part of the song that has a sound on the down and a sound on the up, I want you to stand up. Or it might be longer tones that I ask. When you hear longer tones, stand up. I'm not going to label them as quarter note and half note. I'm going to be using terms that hopefully they already know from other experiences in their life. And we're going to then teach micro, macro, meter, beat function, all kinds of cool stuff. Well, if I'm elementary, I'm doing this with my kids. I love this. And if, when I eventually can get my high school kids to do free movement, which is hard to get them to do, I go there. So, first of all, on your toes. Here we go. Stand. Just do more. All right, so first I want you to march. All right, so is everybody marching? Well, we have learned that marching is overrated, unfortunately. We find that so many kids who've been in a marching band for years and years can't keep beat. In fact, you can look at the marching band and you'll see the kid who's not on the beat. And that is because beat is really internalized by using the vestibular system in your inner ear. So put your arms up like this, first position ballet. Spread those feet apart just a little bit. You're gonna do the heel march where you lift only your heel. Move your arms, please. Here we go. Beat, beat. So it's going to be ta, ta. Join me. Ta, 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 ta. Good. You can also try it this way. Rock back and forth. Ta, ta. Join me. Ta, 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 ta. Good. I hear some of you doing this. Ta, ta, ta. That's not the beat. That's not the full length. You're actually giving me a dotted eighth with a sixteenth rest. Make sure it goes from one if die to the next if die. Join me. Ah. Ta, ta, ta. Good, good. That's really good. And by the way, it's not too metronomic. Thank you very much for that. Because we realize there's, if I had four of those ta's, I could do it several different ways. Put your hand up, please. Like this, you're going to do a forward sweep with your hand. We're going to go ta, ta. So one to two, got it? And ta 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 ta. Now this time, get me the three. And ta 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 ta. Notice my hand is moving at all times because my breath is moving. It's forward momentum of the line. My thumb is not stuck out. My fingers aren't spread because I want a nice round, warm tone for my ensemble. This time you're going to make three go to four. Ready? And ta 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 ta. Okay, this one's tough. Four is going to go to one. Ready? And ta 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 ta. Wow, what I would give for my band not to go Well, the only reason they go that way is because I didn't correct and show them all the ways I, that we could do those simple notes, right? All right, so, okay, marching doesn't do it for you. Still teach them how to march, but know that it's not gonna help internalize beat. Practice it again, feel this. And I use a lot of first position ballet with my kids. Go to the other direction and ask them to switch back and forth. This one um, makes me ill, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> Next thing, clapping. I used to have to clap the rhythm. And what, for long notes, we would do things like this. <laughs> yeah, do you hear that long note? Well, it has to be made with the body. Has to have sound with it. So realize clapping is overrated. Probably the only thing it's good for is attack. And I have all kinds of the things where you'll find some of this. If you want even more research on it, let me know. I'll be happy to share that with you. So clapping is not a good way to do it. It needs to be done. In the ear, out the what? Mouth. Mouth, not with the hands. Okay, good, good, good. You guys are doing great. Now, 
Feel mark, remember how to do that. Lift only your heels, needs to be silent. Good, let's take a look at simple meter. Let's start first with our big beat. Ta, join me and. Ta, ta, ta. We're going to divide a beat. Ta, di, ta, di, ta, di. This is beat function. Down beat will always be ta, the up beat will always be di. So when I hear an upbeat, I know to label it D because it's always going to be that because it's beat function. Notice I haven't said quarter, eighth, or anything, have I? <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to divided beat in simple meter. Ta di ta di ta di. Excellent. Now we're going to go to subdivided. Ta ka. That means they're related on that downbeat. Two vowels the same, but the um, consonant's different. D me. Um, related by the vowel, two different consonants. Taka di me, join me. Taka di me, taka di me, taka di me, taka di me. Go to Ta di, ta di, ta Go to the beat. Ready? And ta, ta, ta. Good, excellent, excellent. Now let's go over to compound meter. Let's start with the beat. And ta, ta. Wow, Dr. K. That sounds the same as in simple meter. Yeah, the beats are the same. The difference comes in the division. One is the divide it's divided into two, and one is divided into three. So join me on Taki Do and Taki Do, Taki Do, Taki Do, Taki Do. Beautiful. Okay, this one's gonna take a little work. Subdivided. Taba. Ki di. Ki di. Do move. Do move. So echo after me a whole pile of patterns. Here I go. Ta ba ki do. Ta ba ki do. Ta ki do. Ta ki do. Ta ki do move. Ta ki do move. Ta ba ki di do. Ta ba ki di do. Ta ki do. Oh, sorry. Ta ki di do move. Ta ki di do move. Ta ba ki do move. Ta ba ki do move. Ta ba ki di do move. Ta ba ki di do move. Good. How many hear that D in there? Do you know that that lines up with the D in simple meter? And this system allows you to do polymetric. It's the only system out there that does. And it allows you to have one group in simple meter and one group in compound meter, and it still all lines up. Brilliant, brilliant. <coughs> okay, then do you see that thing that says war of a beat? Well, Mama Kay didn't know what that was till I wrote my first book and I had 30 theorists look at it and sent me back a nice little note that said, yo. <laughs> that, by the way, is called borrowed beat and I didn't know that. So if I'm in simple meter and I'm doing ta di or taka di mi, taka di mi, when I have a three over note, it's called a triplet but it's actually referred to as borrowed beat because it's borrowed from compound meter where the beat is divided into three. And if I'm in compound meter and I see a two over note, we call it a duplet. But guess where it's borrowed from? Simple meter. So now, I don't know how many of you learned something new. I was very old when I learned this, but um, it's called what? Borrowed beat. Look at that, look at that. Awesome, awesome. Good. Now, what am I gonna do when I have a kid who's going up instead of down? So I hope you all will um, get some of the, um, ooh, what's it called? Hand sanitizer hand after hand a while. All right, but would you connect up? I call it hookups with my older kids. <laughs> I call it connecting with my younger ones. So, <laughs> eh, you know, sex sales, what can I say? <laughs> so, would you be so kind right here to take your two hands and put flat hand, no, stay sideways. No, put your hand like this. Uh, let me come back there. Yeah, it's hard to explain, but that's why it's so important. We have hands, good. Would ever, does everybody see this? Good, would you connect up with her? Okay, everybody connect up? <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Good, connecting up, I love it. And if you don't want to, it's fine, it's fine. All right, so now we're gonna take a breath. And we're gonna, the breath is up here, our prep is up here. We're gonna come in on toss down here and you're gonna echo after Mama K. All right, so here I go, it's my turn first. 
Tom, come join me with the movement. Ready? Here I go. Tom, Toddy, Toddy, Tom. Tom, Toddy, Toddy, Tom. Listen to that again. Tom, Toddy, Toddy, Tom. Would a couple of you be my special learners? And when everybody is going down, you go up. And then the people around you, you know, grip them into like more of a hand thing and get them to feel it. Because often it's because they do not feel the difference between the down and the up. Are you ready? Here we go. Mama K starts. And you start with me. Here I go. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Grab their hands. You've been in the classroom too long, Jason. Is this real? It's so real life, yeah. So real life. And you look at them at first, you think, how can you not feel down and up? And you're using the word down and what? Uh, no, they just, their body coordination, that stuff isn't there yet. So realize it's one of the things you may have to do. You're going to try not to touch your face or anything because we're going to be doing a bunch of things here for a few minutes. All right, so hopefully we've got the macro feelings and happenings there. All right, have a seat for just a second. So Mama makes charts. <laughs> so, for example, you'll see the top there. You'll see the top divided. You'll see the subdivided, and we try to see how it's all lined up. I want you to take a look down here on the compound. We see our ta. We see the ta kidu, which is divided into three. We see our um, ta bikidu dunu, and I hope you see how I've got it color coordinated. And you see the beat division borrowed. Do you notice how the D's and everything are lining up with it? Sometimes kids visually have to see the relationship because their ears can, they are not a strong oral learner. And so we have to work to get them to be a much stronger person in their oral learning. And so if having the charts help. You notice I also have them color coded. I have them done a hundred different ways because this could be the light that hits that kid and off it goes and now they understand the difference between them and how it works. Also realize that when you are doing your hands, it becomes a visual too to see what part of the beat it is. This is the down beat. This is the up beat. We talk about down beat and up beat. And our down beat will always be ta. Our up beat will always be D in simple meter. And so it becomes something when I hear a sound there, I know what to call it. Oh, that's a dog. Oh, that's a cat. All right. So I also put up, let's say we're singing one of these little ditties, I also will have up the strong and the weak beat for the meter, the feeling, and my hands going up and down. Often I have them take and feel. Am I right on target with this? Hopefully you guys all know hot cross buns. Ah, are you ready? Join my cake. Here we go. And on cross Good. But would you sing it without the text? On bum. And Match goes down up. Good, you know the song. Thank you for that. This time, will you stand whenever you hear an elongated beat? That means a beat that is longer than just one, that we're holding a note longer than just one beat. Are you ready? Rock and roll. And. You should be up, down, sitting. Good. Oh, there they go. Good. Good, you got the idea. This time, when you hear a divided beat, that means there will be a sound on the bottom and a dip and a sound on the top. When you hear a divided beat, will you stand? Ready? F. There's that elongated. Bum, 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 bum. 
bum, 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 bum. Do you see how I'm doing everything with the ears? But I'm labeling it, using my labels. So it's going to be, is it beat? Is it elongated beat? Is it divided beat? Is it subdivided beat? I could even after a while start to do horo beat in there. What do you hear with your ears? And then we will also label them. So I'm going to teach lots and lots of ditties that have the elements in that we're going to be working on. I hope you know, row, row, row your boat, the hands are up. And so let's sing it through just once on a neutral syllable, but feel that each beat is divided into three because we're in compound meter, <coughs> not in so simple. Get ready. And. Some of mine are over 10 years old. And you can buy them in red, by the way, too. You can buy them online in red. They work really, really well. They're easy to clean, uh, things of that nature. So here come the balls. We may not have enough for every solitary person in the room. So the only other problem I have is you need to get new ones back. So can you try to give yours? to people that will give you back their balls. The trustworthy people you need. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't want my old ones. So, here we go, right here. Let's do it half of the room. If you don't go on that side of the room and I'll just get these people with Okay, so well I'm here. Take a ball, pass it down. I might have a nuts, so before you open all yours, okay. let's see. Will you take one and pass it down? Who needs 
fun? Okay, you ready? <laughs> well, yes, we got balls everywhere. <laughs> okay, and I'll have to just hang on to that because we'll eventually get back in. Is there anyone without a ball? Everybody has a ball? Look at that, I have three left over. Oh my God, and he ran to every store in, in, in your city yesterday. All right, so, thank you. And so we're gonna start with, this is your catch position, all right? So this is your catch, this is your tabletop. So it will look like this, don't do a thing. Catch and pass, and catch and pass. Right now, just practice for yourself. It will be in your right hand. Right hand, so go. Catch and pass, and catch and pass. And you try to make it as noiseless as you possibly can. Now what I need you to do is to make circles. So, let me think, how many minutes do I have? Let's take about another 10, 15. Okay, and 15 so minutes. let's go in that other room. The choir room. Right as fast as you can go. We're gonna go in the choir room. Emily, yeah. when we get in there, let's just push the chairs to the side, and then uh, circles when you get in there circles of about eight people in each cycle <laughs> and off they go sweet kids oh my gosh isn't this awesome yep still doing it and we all
see what she has to do. Um, not hard at all. I have cell at following direction. Gotcha. So, Yes. 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 Yes.
change it up so my kids can read at any meter and have no problems. All right, so I hope you've seen this. Take your right hand, please. You are going to tap with your right hand into your left. First, we're going to practice. This is our beat. We're going to do ta and ta, ta. And I want them to see that there is breath movement through that entire um, uh, beat. Does everybody see that? It moves. That breath must move. So say your ta. Ta, ta. Good, you got it. Go to divide a beat. Ta, ta, ta. Go to subdivide it. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta. Go back to your beat. Ta, ta. This is the hard one. Elongate it. And two, two. Or you can say ta. Ta, ta. Good. Now turn to a neighbor. You two are a neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. Two, two, two. You two. You two. Good. Put your left hand out. This is the table of truth. <laughs> because you can't lie. You're going to be tapping into your neighbor's left hand. They're going to know if you keep beat. They're going to know if you know the function of each of these. Are you ready? Decide who's A, who's B. Quickly, decide who's A, who's B. Here we go. Ready? And ta, ta. Everybody keep the B going. B, go to division. A, go to elongated. Keep that hand moving. Don't let there be a thing in between. Just show me the other beat. Think inside your head on that one if you have to. 
Um, two sets of tabi. All right, go back to the beat, everybody. Go. Ta, ta. Excellent, really excellent. A, go to division. B, go to subdivision. B, go to elongated. Try to make it move through it smoothly. A, go to borrowed beat. Ta-pee-doo, ta-pee-doo, ta-pee-doo. Good, stop. <laughs> All right, now you're gonna get in groups of four. That means you might have to move around the room, but do it really fast. Go, 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 go. You're gonna have to stand or move the, yeah, something, I don't see Four squares, get four squares, put your left hand out. So if you don't have anyone with just a two square, you have a three square. All right, why don't you bring, I'm going to send your two over to them. <laughs> oh my God, if I did that, I might crack my back. <laughs> you. Okay, good, good. Everybody put your left hand out. You're going to tap into your neighbor's left hand. Decide who's A, B, C, and D. D. A, B, C, or A, B, C. Good, here we go. Are you ready? D. Beat. Beat. Do your ta. 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 B, go to division. C, go to elongated. D, go to subdivision. Make sure everybody's icti hit together. A, go to subdivision. D, go to the beat. C, go to divided beat. B, go to elongated. Chat with your neighbors. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, so divided is two. Yeah, I was All right, divided. next up again. Here we go. But that's okay. This, this time, I'm going to say switch once I get you going. Whatever the person is doing in this hand, if they're tapping the beat, I'm now going to tap the beat. And if I was doing divided, my colleague is going to suddenly be doing divided. Everybody got that? Yeah. So here we go. Connect up. Here we go. Beat, beat, here we go. A, go to elongated. B, go to subdivision. D, go to division. A, go to, I'll keep doing what you're doing. You guys are all right. Keep it going. Ready and switch. Somebody didn't switch in this group. I don't know who it was yet. All right. I'm C. Good. Chat with your neighbor. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This time I'm going to get you going. We are, and I do this in my choirs all the time. Everybody's connected. Uh, I mean, we're in circles or even in the rows, we can be connected. I mean, it's, it's just so important. You'll hear conductors say things like, um, feel the division underneath that beat. You're not keeping it moving forward. <laughs> well, you, you, there's nothing you can do in your conducting pattern to help them to feel under that half note. ta di ta -di, boom making it moving forward with that phrasing. How many have heard directors say things like that? Even had you tap it on your shoulder or your neighbor's shoulders to try to get you to feel this forward, right? So this time I'm gonna ask you to do things like that. this. If you're doing the divided beat, I'd like to see you do this. ta di ta di ta di ta di So you're doing a crescendo forward and a day crescendo backwards over two beats. <laughs> If I'm doing the half note or the elongate, all you can do is keep that movement. Don't let me see you go. <laughs> Which I saw. <laughs> so, 
try to keep it as smoothing that movement and inside my head I am thinking what toddy toddy I'm really not thinking to I'm really feeling that division everybody see what I'm doing mm -hmm. and if you've got subdivision do a set forward and a set what back okay and I'm gonna say switch again here we go beat beat a, go to division. C, go to subdivision. D, go to long. C, or C, or C. Ready and switch. Ready and switch. All right. Do you think it's going to become evident to you, the kids or your students who don't understand functions of beat? Do you think it will become evident to you, those who cannot feel divided and subdivided and elongated? It will. It will show you instantly. This is also something you do when you get kids in a room uh, and you have one of them that says, oh, I can do all this. This is so stupid. Well, great, you can be my partner and demo in front of the class with me. And then usually that's the end of that because they find out there's a lot more yet to learn. I don't care how much you read on that page, how much do you feel, how much do you hear, we've got a lot to go. All right, now we have not done compound yet. So would you be so kind, please, as to pick up your own hand? Let's start with our ta and ta, ta. Divide it and tucky do, tucky do. Get ready. Subdivide it. Tucky do, tucky do, tucky do. Go back to the beat. Tuck. Elongate it and a two. 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 Good. Find your partners. Here we go. And I'll slow the beat down a little bit because that subdivision in compound meter is tough. Here we go. Everybody starting with divided beat in your hand. Ready? And ta ki do ta ki do. B go to the subdivision. C go to elongated. D go to the beat. Ready and a switch. Ready and a switch. And I just want to remind you, I didn't do two against three and three against four, which I should be doing, but I didn't. Talk amongst yourselves really quick about the table of truths. Like when she says switch, we start talking about yes, the other person. Yes, but the divided, divided is this. The beat is the line. Okay. Shh. There's so many more things along this line, but I'm hoping you've got one new tool that you didn't have before. Please look up here as well. You can see my beats, my elongated. You can see my borrowed. I put these things up again because some kids are not oral learners, and we mean to make them better oral learners. But we also don't want them so frustrated, so go through their eyeballs with it to help them see exactly where they are. Learning terminology then allows me to go to any kind of meter signature and not have to talk about the note, but talk about the function, because it's the function that matters in every piece of music. And I can use all kinds of different notes to represent a piece of music. So then I just do more relationships. Here's one with four beats, here's one in compound and four. Great, now meter. So many times we hear beat done equally. Remember, a beat has the same length, but it shouldn't have the same strength. So right where you are with me, please, we're gonna do a meter of two, which is strong and weak and strong and weak, and strong and weak. Now, beat should always be silent. We should never hear it on the legs or anything like that because it'll get faster and faster. So it's silent and cross the bar line. Sing hot cross buns on a neutral syllable, please. 
the beat division. In simple meter, the beat division is into two. And in compound meter, it's into what? Three. Three. How many of us, though, have really got this straight in our heads? And especially when we get to asymmetrical meter and things of that nature. So something to really <laughs> think about. What's the same? What is different? Okay, so here it is. Get ready. <laughs> We're going to make the shortcut happen on this. So when you see the number one, it's a meter of one, which is strong, strong, strong. Join me. Go. Strong, strong, strong. But that's strong. no fun. So you're going to go, yo, yo. Ready? And go. Yo, yo, good. Yo. Meter of two is strong, weak. Try it. Go. Strong, weak. But that's no fun either. So you're going to go, butt cheeks. Ready? And go. Butt cheeks. And your cheeks should be different size and have two different sounds. Good. Three. So you could go strong, weak, weak, right? But that's no fun either. So you're going to go, quack, beep, beep. Ready? And go. Quack, beep, beep. Good. Meter of four, you're going to go find your partner and you're going to go strong, weak, semi strong, weak. Find your partner. Go. Strong, weak, semi strong, weak. Good. Now, stop. Look, listen. We are going to read across on each line. Notice the numbers change. So you've got to be able to see that line. Let's walk through the first line across the top. Beat, beat, rock and roll. Yo, but cheeks, quack, beep, beep, strong, beep, semi strong, beep, but cheeks, quack, beep, beep, strong, beep, semi strong, beep, yo, quack, beep, beep, strong, beep, semi strong, beep, yo, but cheeks, strong, beep, semi strong, beep, yo, but cheeks, quack, group over here. You're going to do it in canon. So you're going to start with yo, yo. Everybody got it? And we're picking up the tempo. B, B, rock and roll. Yo, yo, chunks, chunks. and you're going to go, yo, yo. So you're in a two-part camp, okay? This side, sorry, but, but you, this group is going to start at the bottom, and you're going to do a retro. <laughs> so you're going to start with flat, beep, beep, and you read every line backwards. You guys are the next group, so they're going to go, quack, quack, one beat apart, yes? And I'm going to stay with you, because that's the hardest part. Shh. So I should hear a yo and a quack, and a yo and a quack. Good. Here we go. B, B, ready and up. Yo, yo, cheeks, cheeks, quack, cheeks, yo, we are semi strong, semi strong, what? Cheeks, cheeks, yo, cheeks, yo, we are semi strong, semi strong, yo. Strongs and weeks, then I have it written out 
in a two-part canon because some kids don't understand how it works. And you can do a four-part canon. Then I did the yo and the stop and the butt cheeks and all those things. Um, so I wrote it out as many different ways as I could. So you're going to teach macro and microbeat and subdivided and all those things. You're going to teach meter. And then you're going to do long and short sounds. So I do little things even with the students with slide, long, short, 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 long, long. It's so amazing that when they have to put it in the body, you find out who really can't keep the beat, who really doesn't understand long and short concepts at all. It's pretty amazing to see what's taking place. And then we do some reading with just our longs and shorts. So pick up your hands, please. You're going to do the long, long, and actually move it across because so many of our kids on long notes decay because of the piano. And so you hear choir, you hear bands often, they decay on long notes instead of moving through long notes. So we're going to work really hard to get that concept across. Would you say long and short, please, here? Letter A. Ready? And on. Long, long, short, 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 long, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. Good. Put your hands up. Now, turn to your partner. And this is the table of truth with longs and shorts. All right, everybody got it? Turn my thing to the next slide. This is compound meter. So this is going, and just echo after Mama K for a minute, so I want to go over your patterns. So in your neighbor's hand, you're going to tap this. So echo after me. Here I go. Short, short, short. Short, short, short. Long, short. Long, short. Short, long. Short, long. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. Good, you're getting the idea of what we're going to do, right? Good, put your eyes up on the board, please. Will you read all the longs and the shorts, doing it into your neighbor's hand? Here we go. Ready, and read. Long, short, long, short, 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 Don't short, 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 long. Also connected the whole choir up, the whole band up, um, and read the rhythms even in our piece of music doing shorts and longs and things because you can see it. So many kids look at the notation and really don't understand what to do with it. This is going back and using iconics. Bruner would be really happy with me because it's using things they already can see the difference between long and short. Does everybody understand that? Later, I can put the notation up there, all kinds of notations, and look at the relationships between them. All right, not only can you do some reading in this, but I can also um, say, I'm gonna perform one of these, A or B. Which one did I do? So now I'm finding out, do their ears and their eyes work together? Can they figure out the difference? Both in simple meter and compound meter. But I can also do composition, where they write it out, longs and shorts, pass it over one person, and they have to perform it. So we have the debut of their composition, but even more importantly, I'm getting independent testing and they don't realize that. I can do dictation, which I'll show you in a moment, but we can also improvise. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stay in compound meter for a minute. If the last thing that the person said was short, your pattern must start with a short. If the last thing they said was a long, you must start with the long. So let's say one person said short, long. I then have to start with the long. Here are my choices. Long or what? Long, short. So I have to make choices, don't I? Now that means a short just ended. So somebody could do what? Short, short, short. Or their up other option would be short, long. And you've got to think like this and hopefully keep your beat and everything under check. Got your partner? All right, one is gonna start, the other one is going to improvise, and you're gonna do this as quickly as you possibly can. On your mark, get set, go. Short, long. 
Not only that, the better you are at reading, the more you want to what? Read. Guess what? The better they are at understanding what's happening in a piece of music, all this multifaceted area, the more they want to make music. And the more it gives you back. So you can see we can even take our songs and figure out the longs and shorts for them. Now, here's how I would move to notation. There's my longs, my shorts. So I put it up there as the quarter note as the beat. Then I put it up as the half note as the beat. Can you see that? And we talk this relationship all the time. There are two quarters and a half. How many eighths are in a quarter? Two, thank you. How many sixteenths are in an eighth? That's, that's the truth. It never changes no matter what of our, our meter signatures are. Everybody understand that? But it is not the truth to say the quarter note gets one beat. And I say, no, not in this piece. It's half note gets the beat. And then they all go berserk in the room because they've never been made to really read the half note. I'm saying to you, whatever level you get them at, even lower elementary, you can have them put it up with different values because they're already doing it in math. And you don't have to raise your hand, but I can tell you reading in two was my nemesis for a while because I've been kept in the quarter note way too long. So if that's you, start finding things in two to read it. It's all just the eyes, it's not the what? Ears, yeah. So, hope you can see how I'm doing that. Here's what Mama K would do then in Kapo. You can see the longs and shorts and the short, short, shorts. All of that is there. But now here it is in 6-8 and 6-4. And in the books that I've written, I even have 6 16 because it happens in a lot of music. I want my kids to read in any one of the meters. There's really only three uh, meters for compound that we see a lot of. And there's really only three to four in the simple meter. Why not teach them to read it in all? Right from the beginning, don't put them in a pigeonhole. Good, then, so many times kids don't even realize that they just did a rhythm pattern identical in a piece of music. Or the A part came back and, and it, they act like it's a brand new part of the piece. No, we just learned it yesterday. So I asked my kids to figure out real quickly, and this is one way we do it, by iconics again. Can you see really easily that that rhythm pattern comes back three times and here's the new one. Start to think about using iconics, even for yourself. How can I break this apart to be a visual without notation? Because there's so much on the page, some of our kids don't even know where to go. Then I do it another way. Um, I have them write it over in their music where the patterns are the same. This is part of my score study. But I want my kids after a while to get a new piece of music, open it up, find the patterns, find where the 